Kaya. Chaksun Militam Yena Tasma Shri Gadavana Maha. Shri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stap Ditam Yena Bhutta. Swayam Bhutta Kedam Mayam Dadati Swam Padati Kam. Nima Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pustaya Bhutta Lay. Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani Namaste. Bhagavani Pacharine, Nirase Sasunyavadi, Pastyapyade Satarine, Jaisi Krishna Jaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Adleta Gadadhar Srivasari Gaur Bhakta Vindam, Panchakalpa Dubischa, Kripa Sindhu Pe Bhaja Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnave Bhyo Namahona Maha, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vrindam. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <clears throat> so today is, uh, we're celebrating the disappearance day of Sri Kopo Bhatta Goswami, one of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan, Vande Rupa Sanatana Raghu Yago, Sri Jiva Gopal Go. The six Goswamis are the inheritance of the knowledge of given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They are the next in line from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to continue the disciplic succession of the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. They were exemplary in their devotional service, fully observed, absorbed in Krishna consciousness. They wrote many books, they established temples, and they performed great austerities as an offering to Krishna in devotion. So today is one of the six Goswami's disappearance days. It's Gopal Bhatta Goswami. We have Sri Rupa, Rupa Goswami, Sanata Goswami, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Gopal Bhatta Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, and Sri Lajiva Goswami are the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. Gopal Bhatta Goswami's life is quite interesting. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embarked on a tour of South India, traveling and stopping at different temples throughout the countryside. He visited Vishnu temples, he visited Narayan temples, Krishna temples. And one time when he was in the southern part of India, he came across a place called Sri Rangam. Sri Rangam is a famous temple established by the, uh, the Alvars, Alvars were the saints from South India. There are 12 Arva Al Alvars. Tiramangai was the Alvar who established or helped to establish the Sri Rangam temple. That story is worth telling one day. The history of the beginning of the Sri Rangam temple established by uh, Tiramangai. Uh, this temple is huge. It has seven boundary walls with many smaller temples inside of the Gopuram. There's the Gopuram, which is the center, and then around that there are smaller temples. And then there are uh, seven boundary walls. And in each, which in each enclosure, there are many smaller shrines and temples. It's not like a temple. It's actually a huge, gigantic compound. And it is famous for um, its deity uh, Bhartaraj, not Bhartaraj, but uh, uh, Ranganath. Ranganath is the deity of the Sri Rangam temple. It's a reclining deity, beautiful deity. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, he, was, he went into the temple and when he was visiting the different places within the compound, people were noticing 
such an effulgent personality, who is he? Nobody could understand who he was. They thought he was some demigod who appeared. <clears throat> and people were gathering around just to watch him. Uh, one particular person that attracted, uh, was attracted by Lord Chaitanya was uh, Venkata Bhatt. Venkata Bhatt, he was one of the main pujaris in the temple at the time, along with his two brothers, um, um, Trimala Bhatt and uh, Prakasana, not Prakasana, but um, what's his name? <coughs> hmm. A famous Sri Devi, or uh, you on the line? Can you remember that great saint? The uh, brother of Venkata Bhatt and the uncle of Gopal Bhatt. Pramodananda, not Pramodananda. Uh, starts with a P also. Prabodhananda Saraswati, maybe it was Prabodhananda. Prabodhananda Saraswati was a Maya body. I'm thinking of somebody else. Because Prabodhananda went. Famous, famous Vaishnava. Uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, can't remember. Maybe it was Prabodhananda. Yeah, I think it was Prabodhananda, and then there's Prabodhananda Saraswati, which are two different persons. This is Prabodhananda, under the, the other brother. And uncle of Gopal Bhatta. So uh, when uh, they caught their attention of each other, you know, Prabodhananda or Venkatabhat saw that this personality is very special. So they embraced, and Lord Chaitanya immediately became attracted to Venkatabhat and vice versa. And Venkatabhat invited the Lord to come and stay at his house, and the Lord did. And that was during the Chaturmasya during the four months of the rainy season when generally sannyasis don't travel. He came right at the beginning this month now. Actually, we began Chaturmasya just a couple of days ago. During that time, uh, Srila Prabhupada has given us the uh, austerities that we fast from certain foods for each month. For the first month of uh, Chaturmasya, we fast from spinach. From the second month, we fast from yogurt. The third month, we fast from milk. The fourth month, we fast from urdal, urdal. So this month is a spinach fast. So Prabhupada gave us this austerity. It's, rec it's recommended to follow. We don't take any spinach for one month. It began... I believe on the Akadasi, which happened last week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now residing at the house of Venkat the Bhatt, the Lord stayed there. And Venkat had a, a seven-year-old son named Gopal. Gopal immediately took attraction to Lord Chaitanya and vice versa. And Gopal would come and see Lord Chaitanya every day and the Lord would spend some time and teach him uh, various types of sh Shastra. Although he was only a seven-year-old boy, he was very much interested in learning Vaishnava Shastras. So the Lord stayed there and became very dear to the family. After four months, the Lord continued to travel. But before he left, he told Gopal Bhatt that, uh, you know, when... Uh, when the time comes and you you have and your parents are no longer on the planet, please come and uh, join me in Sri Dham Mayapur or in the Mayapur area. And so, um, at the age of thirty, he did. 
Uh, before that, there was one little incident where uh, Gopal Bhatt was a young boy when he was there, when Lord Chaitanya was there, he was dreaming uh, about Krishna. And in the dream, that same Krishna turned into Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the boy understood that that person who was residing at his house was none other than the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna himself. And then Garth, understanding that, his devotion for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu skyrocketed. At the age of 30, he arrived in, in Vrindavan Dham and received a letter from Sanatan and Rupa Goswami that Gopal has come to Vrindavan. Lord Chaitanya responded to the letter by saying, take care of Gopal, make sure that you keep him as one of your associates. So he became one of the Swamis of Vrindavan. Uh, there's a beautiful story of how he uh, became the worshiper of the famous Sri Sri Radha Raman Didi. Um, out of all the deities, there is uh, Govinda, Gopinath, Madan Mohan, Radharaman, Gokulananda, Damodar, and Shamsundar, the seven principal deities of Vrindavan. Uh, Gopal Bhatta Goswami is considered to be the Acharya of Radharamanji. That's a beautiful story. One day, one particular merchant came to visit and he became uh, he came to see Gopal Bhatta Goswami and he had some gifts with him. The gifts were clothes of deities for a Krishna deity and all with, the, with paraphernalia. Uh, Gopal Bhatta Goswami uh, didn't have any deity at the time, but he said, no, some, someday you may find some use for it. So he kept it. Um, there is a story how Gopal Bhatt traveled to the Gandaki River in the Himalayas. This river is famous for being the origin where the Shalagram Shilas appear in this world. The, the Shalagram Shilas are self-manifesting forms of the Lord in the form of rocks who are non-different than Krishna. They come in different forms. So there was one time when so Gopal Bhatta Goswami was in the Gandaki River and uh, he was bathing. And uh, he had his, uh, he had some container or something and uh, he uh, placed the container in the river. And then when he noticed it, he saw that there were 12 shallogram shilas in, inside of it. And he's thinking, what is this? Because generally, you just don't go to uh, the Gandaki River and take the Shalagram Shilas out. It's considered to be something you avoid. But he decided to. So when he uh, put the Shalagram Shilas back into the river, again they came and appeared in his basket. So this happened a few times and he was wondering, what is this? Then he could understand that Krishna wanted him to worship these deities. And so he took these shalagrams back to Vrindavan. And he used to work a piece of cloth. 
um, after after some time, it was actually the day of Lord Nishringadev, Lord Nishringadev's appearance day. So that night before, uh, he he put his shalagrams to rest. And when he woke up, he saw that one of the shalagrams was no longer a shalagram, but it was a beautiful Krishna deity. It had, the deity had manifest himself in his form as Krishna with two hands playing on flute, two feet, regular Krishna deity. Um, when he saw this beautiful deity, he was amazed. And uh, he noticed that on the back of the deity, the, the marks of the shalagram was still there. And the deity was a full, beautiful, threefold bending form of Krishna. He was so happy and says he floated in an ocean of mercy, seeing this beautiful day in deity. On that day, he offered 500 liters of milk to the Lord for the Lord's pleasures, along with sweets and other uh, items. And then now he had those clothes that that uh, merchant had given him, and the clothes happened to fit just perfectly in the deity. Uh, those of you who to go to Rindavanyus, you can see in the Radha Raman temple, that same deity, he's a self-manifested deity. We call him Sri Radha Raman, although you cannot see Radha Rani, she is present in an unmanifested form at the lotus feet of the Lord on the side where Radha Rani manifests herself. In other words, on the left side of the Lord, she is there. Uh, it's one of the most beautiful darshans that you can take. This deity is unique because he is a combination of the characteristics of all of the three main deities of Vrindavan, Govindaji, Gopinath, and Madan Mohan. Uh, Hare Hare, Namakrishna, Yadavaya, Namaham, Yadavaya, Malavaya, Keshavaya Namaha, Gopal Govindaram, Srimadu Sudan, Giridari Gopinath Madan Mohan. Giridari Gopinath Madan Mohan. So that same Giridari is actually Govindaji and Madan Mohan and Gopinath. These are the three principal deities. And they also coincide with the three. Uh, main deities where Govindaji is the beautiful, beautiful chest of Madan. Uh, um, so Go, uh, Radha Raman has the face of Gopinath. He has the chest of Govindaji. He has the feet of Madan Mohan. And so he is considered to be the embodiment of these three deities, but he is unique in himself, Sisi Radha Ramanji. When we were traveling in South India in the year 2005, 2006, December, January, we came to the house of Venkatabhat where Lord Chaitanya stayed. And we were able to meet the, man, the ancestors of the of uh, Gopal Bhatta Goswami or Venkata Bhatta Goswami <laughs> and uh, mm, we spent some time we visited the house and we also met the, the present family members headed by Murli Bhatt who is the present Pujari for the Sri Sri Radha Raman temple so Govinda uh, Radha Raman is a very special deity. Uh, the three main deities of Vrindavan also correspond to three Acharyas. The three Acharyas are Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, and Raghunath Das Goswami. But we also have Gopal Bhatta, who is the Acharya 
or connected with the worship of Gopal Bhatta Goswami or Sisi Radha Ramanji. Gopal Bhatta Goswami is not so much mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita. There's very little known about his life. Was about to begin his writing on the life of Lord Chaitanya, which later became Chaitanya Charitamrita. Gopal Bhatta Goswami told uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, do not write anything about me. He didn't want any kind of name or fame. So very carefully, uh, uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami avoids mentioning Gopal Bhatta Goswami, but he does mention him in one or two places just to indicate that he is also one of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. His humility is glorious. Anybody would sometimes find fault with another Vaishnava, Gopal Bhatta Goswami would ask that person who was finding fault, is this person chanting Hare Krishna? And if he said yes, he said, if he's chanting Hare Krishna, he is a great Vaishnava, he has no faults. <laughs> he would always say, if he's chanting Hare Krishna, that's all I want to know. <laughs> so his humility is glorious. He also wrote a few books about deity worship, how to perform deity worship according to the Pancharatriki system. Uh, and uh, we have some of those books within our society. It's also mentioned that uh, Gopal Bhatta Goswami actually began his writing of, um, let me think of the name of that book, Hari Bhakti Vilas. Hari Bhakti Vilas was given, the credit for the work was given to Sanatana Goswami, but it was started by uh, Gopal Bhatta Goswami under the guidance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Go, uh, Hari Bhakti Vilas is the handbook for grihastas and how to execute devotional service. It is being printed within the ex ISKCON society in many volumes. In fact, the work is done. If you are, you find it interesting, you may also, you know, obtain a copy because it's quite interesting in its uh, description of all the principles that make up the execution of Gopal Bhatta Goswami, uh, householder life. And so Chaitanya told Gopal Bhatta, write something about how one should follow a daily regimen of devotion specifically for Grihastas. So today is the auspicious day of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. We don't have much information on it. We do know that the uh, Radha Raman temple is the one of the most, it is not, a, not one of the most, it is the most frequented temple in Sri Vrindavan Dham. Um, because that deity is a self-manifesting Krishna deity. And if you want to see the form of Krishna, this particular deity is practically, it is Krishna himself, because Krishna transformed himself from a Damodar Shila, which Gopal Bhatta Goswami found in the Gandaki River, and later he manifested himself as the beautiful Krishna form known as Radha Raman, or Ramanji. Mm -hmm. uh, that deity is most powerful. You'll see in the homes of practically every devotee in our ISKCON society, everyone has a picture of Sri Radha Raman. <laughs> uh, he is the favorite deity of all the Vaishnavas because he is actually self-manifesting Krishna deity, very powerful deity. 
there's one kind of an unfortunate story that goes along with this particular deity. Um, I'll see if I can find the story and read it, actually. This deity has fingernails and even teeth. That's interesting. The deity has teeth. Hmm. There is a story where one, one small son of one of the Savites in the temple was playing with the deity. He was playing with Ramon. And once he put a small stick in the ear of the deity and pushed it out the other ear. The stick, however, had blood on it. And that boy died vomiting blood that same day. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's unfortunate, but uh, he caused harm to the deity. And because of that offense, that same boy lost his life. Mm -hmm. Hmm. If you go during the Snan Yastra festival, you must visit the Raman, Radha Raman temple. They perform that festival very nice. Um, Sri Sri um, uh, Padmana Goswami, he's one of the principal Goswamis of the uh, Radha Raman temple today. Uh, in the year 2000, I believe it was, or 2001, he traveled all over the United States and speaking the glories of Sri Sri Radha Raman. I had the good fortune of meeting him when he came to the Chicago temple in that same year. And he gifted me with a beautiful book, which is called Krishna. And in that book, it's a, it's a very rare book. You, you can't find it anywhere. It's only published inside of the Radharaman temple in that area. It's all of the different uh, festivals centered around Sri Sri Radha Raman. It's a very colorful book with many, many pictures of Sri Sri Radha Raman being worshiped in different festivals along with a lot of information. So this deity is one of the most popular and especially for ISKCON devotees. Is another story. Ten years after um, Gopal Bhatta discovered the Radharamandide, he went. He returned from bathing in the Jamuna one day, and he saw one young boy sitting at the door of his bhajan kutir. When the boy saw the Goswami approaching, he got up and fell down to offer his obeisances. Gopal Bhatta Goswami inquired from the boy who he was. He said, my home was in Devad Dyadgram within Sahadpur near Hardwar. My father has sent me here to serve you. My name is Gopinath. And Gopal Bhatta could remember the time when he went to Hardware many years ago. So this boy remained with him and very carefully began to serve Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Eventually, he became known as Gopinath Pur. Life as a brahmachari. His younger brother, Sri Damodar, along with his family, accepted initiation from Srila Gopinath Ji and also became engaged in the service of the deity. Hmm. Gopal Bhatta Goswami was the initiating guru of Srinivasa and trained in Pancharatriki Vidhi, which he had learned from his father. And he wrote one book called Sat Sandarva Karika. Uh, and also he wrote, no, he wrote many books. One another one, Sri Krishna Vallabha, Sri Kriya Saradipika. That's 
That's a brilliant work on Vaishram Samskars. And Lagu Hari Bhakti Vilas with Dig Darshana Tipini. This is coming from the work of Sanatan Goswami's Hari Bhakti Vilas. Gopal Bhatta Goswami resided 45 years in Vrindavan Dham. And out of his great humility, of course, we mentioned he asked Lord uh, um, Krishna Das Kaviraj not to mention him in his work. His disappearance day is today, the sixth day of the dark fourth movement of the month of Shravan. He appeared, he disappeared in the year 1578 at the age of 75 years old. <laughs> Very special personality who had the special darshan and mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So today is his disappearance day in this beautiful uh, month of Shravan. <laughs> So this is a little bit about the life of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Unfortunately, you can't find much work on Gopal Bhatta Goswami. The nature of Vaishnava is the Vaishnava does not at all want to be glorified. A Vaishnava wants to glorify the Lord. A Vaishnava wants to glorify other Vaishnavas. A Vaishnava does not look for personal glorification. In fact, they avoid it strongly. And in this case, we see an exemplary personality who performed many, many services, had disciples, wrote books, opened up the temple, worshipped this beautiful deity, which is the most famous deity today. But uh, due to his natural humility, um, not much was written about his life. Uh, that was his desire. And so Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, who knew much about the life of Gopal Bhatta Goswami, respected this request and only very incidentally mentions his name once, I think in Chaitanya Charitamrita, just to remind us of his presence but he doesn't get into any of the Gopal Bhatti Goswami's amazing pastimes. Mm -hmm. So it's a beautiful day. It's a glorious day. It's an important day. The six Goswamis of Vrindavan have established the entire, uh, uh, they've, they've, they've established all the principles that make up Lord Chaitanya's teachings and his direction for executing devotional service in this age. So they, have, they are all followers of Lord Chaitanya, like that. Srinivas Acharya and his beautiful song, Sad, Go, Sad Goswami Astakam, glorifies in eight verses the six Goswamis. Bande Rupa Sanatano Ragu Yago. Sri Jiva Gopalu Go. Uh, these six Goswamis of Vrindavan. He Radhe Rajate Chite Telalite He Nanda Sunukuta. How they worshipped Radha and Krishna in the mood of separation in Sri Vrindavan Dham, which was the highest expression of bhakti to worship Lord Chaitanya or to worship Krishna in the mood of what Lord Chaitanya taught us, the mood of separation. Dira dira jana priya priya karo, karo pujito. Nana shastra vichara naipa nipa no sadharma samstapako, lokanam hitakarina tribhuvane, manyo saranya karo. Radha Krishna Padada Nova Vindano, Vande Rupa Sanatana Nova Guyago, 
Sri Jiva Gopal ago. They have studied all the revealed scriptures and have extracted the ex essence of those scriptures and written many books, which are the Gaudiya Vaishnava's direction and the execution and philosophical teachings. The works of the Goswamis, especially Rupa Goswami, Jiva Goswami. Also, we have some writings from Gopal Bhatta Goswami and also from Raghunath Das Goswami. And uh, the, these four Goswamis were the most prolific of all the writers of the six Goswamis, like that. Uh, and of course, Sanatan Goswami also. So the works of the Goswamis are our connection with Krishna in devotional service. Um, you know, there is another beautiful verse. Uh, let's see if I can think. But yeah, this, yeah, these are the verses. Tvaktva turna mashesha mandala pativ srenim sadatu chivat bhutva dina ganesha kokana naya kopina kanthatiko gopi bhava risamritam dadahari Kalola Magno Mahur, one day Rupa Sanat and no Ragu you go. Sri Jiva Gopal Lako. Turn to the translation of that one, number four. Yeah. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the six Goswami, namely Sri Rupa Sanat and Bhatta Ragunath, Sri Jiva Gopal Bhatta Das Ragunath, who kicked off all association of aristocrat, aristocracy as insignificant. In order to deliver the poor conditioned souls, they accepted loincloth, treating themselves as mendicants. But they were always merged in the ecstatic ocean of Gopi's love for Krishna and bathed always in the repeated waves of that of the ocean, the ocean of bhakti. So um, many of them, especially Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, uh, had uh, positions in high political places, but they threw it all off simply to show compassion, to show mercy to the fallen souls and accepted the most menial, uh, Nija Bhakti. Nija means small or very insignificant. Uh, Nija, they became Nija and so uh, renounced in everything. They would hardly eat. And it says, you know, uh, Raghunath Das Goswami would eat one pat of butter every couple of days. They lived on begging. They would do madhukari. Sometimes they would beg some roti or some chickpea or some rice, and that's how they lived, very simply. The lives of the Goswamis are the exemplary uh, principles of renunciation and devotion, like that. And yet they wrote so many books, and they didn't write like we have. Oh, we have all the nice facilities for writing. We have computers you can type, and you can paste, and you can edit. They wrote on palm leaves using these uh, these little points to scratch the letters into the palm leaf. That's how they wrote. I've seen some of the writings of the Goswamis, the originals. Some there's some devotees who have these original writings. Uh, of course, the paper is falling apart, but it's so beautiful handwriting in Sanskrit um, and simply carved in palm leaves. Can you imagine how long it takes to write by scratching the letters into the into palm leaves? I don't think we would have such patience to write nowadays. No one would write if that was the way of writing. But they did it. And they were, I mean, Jiva Goswami is the wrote 400,000 verses. Rupa Goswami wrote minimum 25 books. 
Sanatana Goswami wrote about eight books. Raghunath Das Goswami wrote about five or six books. Gopal Bhatta, four or five books. So they were all prolific in uh, writing, teaching renunciation. They opened temples and they were exemplary in preaching Krishna consciousness to the fallen souls. The lives of the Goswamis must be studied. We have one beautiful book called The Life of the Six Goswamis. There's a few actually, and uh, one can uh, go deeper into the knowledge that made up their lives, which is really uh, to see how devotional service takes on such such austerity in on a personal level, but has such devotion also. Okay, so these are a little bit about the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. Go back to the original song. We can see the actual Sanskrit one time again. Uh, into the uh, maybe we can sing. You can sing along with me if you want. Krishna Kirtana Gana Natana Paro Prem Amritam Bodhi Dira Dira Jana Priya Priya Karo Near Matsaro Pujito Sri Jaitanya Kripa Baro Bhuvi Bhuvo Barava Hantara Ko Bande Rupa Sanatana Raghu Yago Sri Jeeva Gopala Ko Nana Shasta Vichara Naika Nipano Sad Dharma Samstapa Ko Loka Nam Hitakari no Tribu Vane Manyo Saranya Karo Radha Krishna Padara Vinda Bajanan Nandena Mataliko Bande Rupa Sanatana Raghu Yugo Sri Jeeva Gopala Koho Shri Goranga Gu Sradha Samridyam Vito Papa Tapo Nikirta no Tano Britam Go Vinda Gam Ram Rita Anandam Buri Varda Naika Nipano Kail Vayanistarako Vande Rupa Sanat and No Ragu Yago Sri Jeeva Gopala Koho Tatva Tunam Ashesha Mandalapati Sreenam Sadatu Chavat Bhutva Dina Ganesha No Karunaya Gopina Kanta Strito Gopi Bhava Risamritam Dehalara Hari Kalola Magnam Mohur Bande Rupa Sanat No Ragu Yago Sri Jeeva Gopala Ko Kuja Ko Kila Hamsa Sarasa Gana Kirne Marura Kule Nana Rata Vibhada Mula Vipata Sri Yukta Vrindavane Radha Krishna Ahara Nisa Pradaja Jato Tata Do Yamuda Bande Rupa Sanat and No Ragu Yago Sri Jeeva Gopala Ko Sakya Purna Sakya Purvaka Namagana Rati B Kalavasani Krito Nidrahara Vihara Kara Vijato Chat Yanta Digno Chayo Radha Krishna Gunasmitir Madhumirma Nandena Samohito Bande Rupa Sanatana Ragu Yago Sri Jeeva Gopalako 
Radha Kunda Tate Kalinditanaya Tire Chavam Sivate Premo Madhava Sana Se Sadasaya Grasto Pramato Sada Gayanto Chakadahare Gunavaram Vavam Bibutau Muda Vande Rupa Sanhat and No Ragu Yago Sri Jeeva Gopalako He Rad He Rajaketa Deva Kalite He Nanda Suno Kata Sri Govardhan Nakalpa Padarathale Kalindi Vardhan Kuto Gostanta Viti Sarvato Rajapure Kedar Mahavivalo Vande Rupa Sanat and Ho Ragu Yago Sri Jeeva Gopalako Vande Rupa Sanat and Ho Ragu Yago Sri Jeeva Gopalako Beautiful, beautiful. And the translations are also so beautiful. So, um, yeah. Take time and study the life of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan, and then you'll understand everything about Krishna consciousness. <laughs> everything is there in their, their life. Okay, and today we are honoring Gopal Bhatta Goswami, one of the six Goswamis of Sri Vrindavan who established the Sri Sri Radha Ramanji Didi in Sri Vrindavan Dham. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for a beautiful class and narrating about Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Thank you so much. Uh, I request devotees, if there are any questions, comments, realizations, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, uh, my humble obeisance is to you Maharaj, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. Um, so Maharaj, uh, I've had the good fortune to go to the Radha Raman temple a few times. And uh, I mean, I, I just wanted to understand when you say it's self-manifested, it still looks like uh, a deity with, you know, with the human form. Uh, so how is that, uh, how is that formed? I mean, it's manifested in the form the way it is now, it is... Yeah, and, uh, it was a shalagram. It was a Damodar shalagram. And overnight, on the appearance day of Lord Nisringadev, the deity transformed himself or the shalagram shila transformed himself into the krishna deity who you now see as sri radharaman he has fingernails he has teeth and if you were able to see on the back of the deity part of the shila is still just to indicate that he actually did transform from that so it's a self-manifesting krishna deity krishna transformed himself just for the pleasure of his devotee. Mm -hmm. We lost we lost your volume now. Oh sorry Maharaj I was went back on mute because kids are in the house. Yeah no sorry I, I didn't know about that Maharaj. So thank you very much for sharing. I, I when I go next time it's it's just going to have a completely different meaning now looking at the same deity form. Brother Rani is right next to him, but you can't see her. <laughs> She's there. <laughs> Excellent. Sometimes they put some paraphernalia in the place where Radha Rani is there, just to indicate that she is present. <laughs> right. Very, very powerful darshan. It's very rare if you can get to the front. If you get to the front, you are considered both most fortunate. Thanks, so. yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you.
You look quite healthy. Uh, Prabhuji, so you, you're on mute. You're on, you're mute. on mute. You're on mute again. Oh, sorry. I I probably have put on weight, Maharaj, because I keep having Prashad and coming back to the same desk. So I've been glued to the desk a lot, which is probably why I've been putting on weight. <laughs> but that wasn't what I was referring to. <laughs> it was based on your letter you wrote me. Oh, oh, that way. Yeah, no, I, I am absolutely fine, Maharaj. I've, I've been to work as well, but it's just, uh, it's just the, you know, the message I got from work saying that, you know, you've been in close contact and so on. I, I am absolutely fine. I've, I've tested yeah. negative myself. You're absolutely fine too. But I think is, I don't have any problem, but I think the other people who you invite might have problems, so. Yeah, so so that's fine, Maharaj. I think my wife has been speaking to Roberto Prabhu as well. So, you know, if you're fine, then, you know, we can still go ahead. Uh, and if someone wants to join, they can join. If not, then we'll, we, we can still go ahead. I mean, from our side. Um, all right. I'll speak to Roberto and see what has been discussed. And uh, I have no problem. Oh, that's 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 music to yes, Maharaj. So we we we'll go ahead as planned then. And if somebody wants to join, they'll join. If they can't join, then uh, you know they'll miss out. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I not only did, I was going to immediately write you back, but I was thinking, well, it's a program, and if everybody else won't come, so I was thinking, I'll just wait. But if it, if you're fine, I'm fine. <laughs> No, we, we're absolutely fine, Maharaj. I'm, I have I have no symptoms. I've tested as well. It's negative. Um, we've double jabbed, but as a gesture or, or as courtesy, we had to inform everyone. And I I'm not expecting anyone to turn out, but we'll go ahead as planned, then, Maharaj. If you are if you're okay with it. Um, you're in, you just tell me what to do. <laughs> okay, Mara, that's fine. I will uh, liaise with Roberta Prabhu and then we will uh, reach out and let you know exactly. Okay, good. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna, thank you. Uttababana Prabhu, give us your insight about, you know, one day Rupa Sanatana Raghu Yago Sri Jiva Gopal Ago. I think it was, it was just really beautiful. It's a, I say, a way of glorifying Gopabhati Goswami. And I really love the point you made about studying the life of the Goswamis because in the prayer, everything about their life, what they did, their mood, it's all encapsulated in that prayer. So it was really, it was really nice to, um, to recite it. As far as we know, that's the only thing that Srinivasacharya wrote. It's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I was wondering if I could ask a question, please, Maharaj. Yeah. So, um, so you mentioned that Gopal Bhatta Goswami, who told Krishna Kaviraj Goswami not to write anything about him, and you mentioned the fact that he, he didn't want any kind of recognition or honor or fame. And I remember years ago, you mentioned that Pratishta, the desire for fame, is the last, is the last one to go. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But that desire for petition is the last one to, to be cleared. Is that correct or not? Generally, as a person makes progress in devotional service, you know, initially the gross forms of sinful activities go and then they, but still the subtle ones remain. And they're, what is it called? Profit adoration and distinction are the subtle and very hard to detect forms that linger on. And out of all of those, even if a person becomes, you know, a great spiritualist, the tendency is to want or expects or at least uh, find happiness in, 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 glorif in being glorified. Uh, but Bhakti Siddhanta gives a very strong statement. He calls Pratishta, he calls it, he calls it the stool of a boar. And you know what a boar is? A boar is a male pig that runs wild in the jungles. 
And what do pigs eat? They eat stool. What is the stool of a boar eating, boar eating stool? A stool eating boar is recycled stool. <laughs> so it's like stool over and over again. So Bhakti Siddhanta really gets strong. Uh, this desire for fame or name is, uh, you know, it's a stumbling block. And um, uh, Raghunath Das Goswami speaks about it in Manashiksha in a very direct way. You can read about it in Manashiksha, especially in those verses, I think verses seven and eight. He calls it, uh, he calls it donkey urine. So I wanted to ask, so why, what is the cause of this desire for name, fame and distinction? And what is the, what is the correct means to uproot it in the heart? It's almost uh, to want to be noticed, to want to be uh, given some praise is, is really a very big part of the living entity's nature in the, in the conditioned state. We see people will do anything for fame and name. It's even more important than money or even sense, or even sex. They can leave sex life behind, but name and favor is even more powerful. It's actually a form of sex life in the subtle form. Mm -hmm. It's considered to be the subtle form of sex desire, name and fame. Mm -hmm. um, everyone, we, I'm speaking in a conditioned sense now. Everyone wants to be noticed. Everyone wants to be praised. Everyone wants to have it. Uh, but a devotee doesn't find any happiness in that because what their happiness is is in, is in the service and not what they get from the service. Mm -hmm. But it's very hard to detect and it's very difficult to eliminate because as you make advancement, Krishna arranges for that person to get, you know, accolades, perks, followers. That's why Lord Chaitanya said, Nadanam, Najanam. So he, Lord Chaitanya, made a point to illustrate that I don't want wealth, I don't want followers, I don't want the pleasures of the opposite sex. I, I even don't even want in the position of being known as a great orator or great uh, scholar of Vedic knowledge. That also comes under Sundarim also. Mm -hmm. and what do I want? Janmani Janmani Ishwari Bhavatad Bhakti or Hai Tukiti. I'm just saying, I don't even want liberation, Kaivalya. I want your devotional service birth after birth. So one who tastes the happiness of devotional service doesn't seek happiness in any of these more gross or subtle forms of uh, material life, but they come. It's interesting because Krishna will glorify his devotees. Krishna will send other people towards them to glorify them. So how do you get rid of it when it comes automatically, naturally, as one becomes more and more advanced in devotional service? The thing is one has to be very careful and at the same time, pass it on. That's why we say, all glories to our spiritual master. Uh, a devotee knows that whatever he's done or she's done, whatever they are, is all by the mercy of the Lord and the mercy of the spiritual master. So not taking credit for any success that one may have is the way to eliminate this desire for name and fame, giving credit to where credit is due. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada would speak about this a lot. He said that people say, oh, oh, people say I've done so many wonderful things, but I don't know what wonderful thing I've done. All I know is that I very 
strictly follow the instructions of my Guru Maharaj. And therefore, by his mercy, I have become successful. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the understanding. By the mercy of one spiritual master coming through the simplex succession from Krishna, one becomes, what we say, successful in the execution of their devotionals. Successful means they bring about, you know, auspiciousness to everyone else they come in contact with. And people will naturally praise and glorify such a person and also give many gifts in, in appreciation. But if the devotee thinks, oh, it's for me, then that consciousness blocks their relationship with Krishna. And if it becomes too strong, then it becomes pratishta. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Just one other question I had also was that um, we sometimes have heard about how pure devotees may have different points of view. They may have different ways of doing something. But if we understand pure devotees as those who are so in tune with Krishna that they know Krishna's desire, I, I just wondered if you could elaborate. If two devotees are both pure and they both are in tune with Krishna, how can they have dis, how can they have differences of opinion? And how are we, we meant to perceive that when the because I also know that sometimes Prabhupada would say that some people some devotees may have differences because of their own eternal position. So I was wondering if you could say something on that. Well. I mean, if you're talking about just devotees in general or pure devotees? Um, pure devotees, actually. Yeah, well, pure devotees, they have a, an understanding of the absolute truth, and they may have that same, they have that perspective from different angles. So the absolute truth is so diverse and so broad. The example is given is that if you're standing next to a mountain, mm -hmm. and you're standing on one side of the mountain, and you, you're looking at the mountain, you can see what 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 is within your range of vision. Mm -hmm. Someone who's standing on the other side of the mountain is also seeing the same mountain, but he's seeing something different because he's on the other side. So both are describing the mountain, but both are actually telling what what their realizations are, what their experiences are. Both are right. Mm -hmm. That's why it says when if you two two great souls have differences of opinion. If you take sides with one or the other, you become destroyed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we have the example of Lord Nityananda and uh, and uh, Advaita Charya at the house of Advaita Charya, where they got into an argument about and they were just kind of like apparently ridiculing each other in different ways, and Prabhupada, you know, very carefully makes this notation that if one takes the side of either one of them, they become destroyed because it's on the transcendental platform. And therefore, it's not seen in the material way what is someone is right and someone is wrong. The absolute truth is two people can have two different opinions and they can both be right. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Marge. And there's also that verse in the Mahabharata uh, what is that verse? Tarko Pratishta Shruti Do you know the rest of the verse? I know the last line, Mahajano Yena Katasapanta. That that line is the key that the truth of religious principles are hidden in the hearts of the self-realized souls. <laughs> Tarko Pratishta Sutinam Vibhinam Nashada. No, I can't remember. Can uh, Runda, can you bring up that verse? Tarko Pratishta. I think it's I think it's in Madhya Lila, chapter 22, verse 111, but I may be wrong. <laughs> I'm not sure. Tarko T-A-R-K-O is the first line. First word, Tarko Pratishta Shrutida Vibhinam. Yeah, there you go. Tarko Pratishta Shrutaya Vibhinam Nasavrashir Yasya Matir Nabhinam Dharmasya Tattva Vihihaya Guhayam Mahajanoyena Katasupantam. 
Ma Mahaprabhu speaks this verse, dry arguments are inconclusive. A great personality who opinion, whose opinion does not differ from others is not considered a great sage. Simply by studying the Vedas, which are variegated, one cannot come to the right path by which religious principles are understood. The true, solid truth of religious principles is hidden in the hearts of the unadulterated, self-realized person. Consequently, as the Shastras confirm, one should accept whatever progressive path the Mahajans advocate. Now, this is from Mahabharat, spoken by Yudhisthira Maharaj. A great personality whose opinion does not differ from others is not considered a great sage. Thank you very much, Marge. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sri Devi. Go ahead, Mataji. Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Um, thank you, Guru Maharaj, for this, again, another very illustrative lecture on uh, the lifestyle of the Goswamis and especially Gopal Bhatta Goswami. As I was listening to the lecture, I was thinking to myself, the Sat Goswamis were very aristocratic people. They were also very highly qualified and they held responsible positions. They kicked off everything. And he took to the path of renunciation in order to follow the orders of Lord Chaitanya and propagate Krishna consciousness. Looking at our lifestyles today and looking at the challenges of living the way we live, what would the Sadhguru Swamis tell us about how to really become Krishna conscious? Um, Rupa Goswami gives us a formula near Banda Krishna Sambanda Yukta Varagya Uchtate. Um, but we're, uh, I don't know the first two lines. Buddha Bhavana Prabhu, you know the first two lines of that verse? Spoken by Rupa Goswami. There's two verses together. Very much. I, I was actually away because I had to do something for work, so I did not hear what um, Sri Devi was saying. The, uh, I'm trying to think of that one verse. Uh, Near Bandes Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairagya Uchtate. Do you remember the whole verse? No, I remember those two lines. It's in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, spoken by Rupa Goswami. Um, you think you could find it, Vrunda? It's near Bande Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairagya Uchtate. I can't remember the first two lines. And then it'll answer your question. No, this oh. is a different verse. Okay. Oh. It's a. Uh, just look up near Bande, N I R B A N D H A, near Bande, Krishna, some Bande. Nirbanda, Krishna Sambande, I think it is, yeah. Is that where Anasaktasya Vishayan Yatharam Upayunjataha Kam Guru Maharaj? Uh, yeah, An -an Anatasya, yeah. That's it, that's it, you got it. Anatana Vistaya, can you say that again? Anasaktasya Vishayan Yatharam Upayunjataha. Yeah, near Bande Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairagya Yushite. That's the verse. Yeah. Anatasya Visayan, right? Anasaktasya Vishayan Yatharam Upayunjataha. But I don't know where it comes. It's in Chaitanya Charitamrita. 
It's spoken by Rupa Goswami. <laughs> Anatasya, how do you spell that? Anasaktasya, A N A S A K T A S Y A. Vishayan is V I S with a dot underneath, A Y A N. It's quoted often by Prabhupada. Can you find that Varunda and Varunda? Anatasya. I'm trying to find it, but I don't see it in Chaitanya Charitamrita. I'm trying to find it still. Mm. Um, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. It's a, Mataji is in Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, verse okay. 1.255. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mataji. Uh, but, it's hard, but it's hard to find with that reference. Yeah. Um, one, wait a minute, one minute. I think I have a verse book here. Yeah, I'll look it up in my verse book. I just remembered I had this verse book. Uh, I found it here, Maharaj. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Here you go. Anata Ana Satasya Visayam Yaryatam Upayunjate near Bandha and Krishna Sambandha Yukta Vairagya Uchtate Upanchi Kataya Budya Hari Sambandha Vastuna Umuk Subir Parikta Gyo Vairagyam Pagu Katyate when one is not attached to anything, but at the same time accepts everything in relationship to Krishna, one is rightly situated above possessions. On the other hand, one who rejects everything without knowledge of its relationship to Krishna is not as complete, is not as complete in his renunciation. Prabhupada's a Krishna conscious person well knows that everything belongs to Krishna and thus he is always free from the feeling of personal possession. If you keep jumping this page, I'm going to getting dizzy here. Uh, actually, it's <laughs> moving by itself, Maharaj. I'm so sorry. I don't know why it's moving actually. As such, he has no hankering for anything for his own personal account. He knows how to accept things in favor of Krishna consciousness and how to reject things unfavorable to Krishna. He is always aloof from material things because he's always transcendental. And he doesn't associate with persons who are not in Krishna consciousness. So when one is not attached to anything, but at the same time accepts everything in relationship to Krishna, one is rightly situated above possessiveness. That's the answer. <laughs> Hmm. So, we really need our intelligence to be really sharpened. We also need to be consulting with our mentors and seniors and guides on how to conduct ourselves in Krishna consciousness in such a way that we don't get entangled even as we are conducting our lives. Is that correct? Yeah, it says here... Uh, uh, the one who rejects everything without knowledge of his relationship to Krishna is not as complete in his renunciation. Mm. So not being attached to anything means using everything for Krishna. That's all. Mm. Thank you, Guru Mahārāj. You may use something, but it doesn't mean you're attached to it and you're not, you don't own it. If someone, someone gives you a place to live, you may use the place, but you know you don't, it's not yours. So in that same way, Krishna has given us so many things. So what do we do with it? We use it for his service and we take what we need to keep body and soul together so we can execute our devotional life. That's all. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Does that answer your question? 
Yes, I think it answers it very nicely because it's quite troubling the way we can easily get allured or entangled thinking, oh, I can use this for Krishna, oh, I can do that for Krishna, but it actually may be a trap and that's why we need the guidance of the guru and sadhus to, to help us um, not fall prey to the trap of thinking or accumulating things uh, saying I can use this for Krishna service and then it's just one more burden on your head. You see the word in the verse is called yukta, yukta raivagya. That means, that means using but not possessing. Yukta means in relationship to. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. It's not by ragya, it's yukta raya, by ragya. Right, and this actually is very reassuring because sometimes we think, oh, we are so far away from, you know, the holy places or our lifestyle is so different from what the uh, Sadhguru Goswami's lifestyle was. So how can we ever be Krishna conscious? But here's the key that in whatever situation, in whatever circumstances, we can do our level best to become Krishna conscious uh, with the guidance of these words of the scripture. So thank you very much. We have, yeah, we have the examples of some of Lord Chaitanya's great followers who were quite materially well-to-do, but they weren't attached to it. We have Pundarik Vidyaniti, for example, is one. So uh, to have a lot doesn't mean you are a visayi, a sense gratifier, if you use what you have for the service of the Lord. But what happens with devotees, thank you, uh, Matsya, this Prabhupada speaks about it in this particular verse from this seventh canto, 13th chapter. Uh, the idea is not to accumulate more things in the name of Yukta, but just to accept what is necessary to keep body and soul together. If you're preaching, then you may also have a little more facilities in order to carry on the preaching work. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for your enlightening. Yeah, just like you, you got your little cubby hole now you're living in. And before you were living with Mother, uh, you know, Lavanya in this nice, beautiful house. So, you know, you, it's not that you went to visit the house, you went to visit her, but she happens to have a nice house. Now you're back into your little bhajan kutir. <laughs> So, right, you can live in both places, carry on, doesn't matter. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. And if somebody you takes half of your, huh? somebody, if somebody takes half of your house away, you can still live, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for that to happen, actually. <laughs> it's, com it's coming. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Thank you very much. My humble obeisances. The less you have, the, the, the less problems you have also. <laughs> I'm understanding that it's becoming very clear to me that it actually is the cause of all bondage. Yeah, we have, we want to focus on Krishna and therefore uh, whatever is conducive to help us focusing on Krishna. Thank you so much. When you get to Slovenia, it's going to get less. <laughs> less material, but much more spiritual. Yes, Guru Maharaj. 24th August, we'll be leaving, finally. I'll be there. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. To infinity. <laughs> Mark your calendar. 
Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Anything else from the devotees? <laughs> Ladini, are you there? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my obeisances, all Rishi Srila Prabhupada. Yes, I am. Yeah, I wanted to speak to you. Can I call you right after this class? Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know if I have your phone number. Can you tell me? I'll put it in the chat. Okay. It's WhatsApp? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and WhatsApp. Okay. Plus four, four. Seven, seven. Sorry to do business online, but this is the only way I can get things done. No, not to worry. Uh, I didn't get all the. I didn't get okay, all the. Okay, eight seven seven eight six three six zero zero two one. Seven seven eight six three six zero 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 two one. Yeah, two zeros. Oh. Oh, it should okay. be only 11 digits. Yeah, 360021. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, just briefly, I just have to ask you what I consider an important question. No, no problem. Is your sister with you? Uh, no, she's uh, away this week, Maharaj. Good. That's why I want to talk to you. <laughs> okay. okay okay thank you all right devotees anything else on the krishna conscious hotline okay thank you very much we'll see you uh, tomorrow is Thursday, and Thursday we do our program at 12 noon UK time, and we do it with the Harrisburg devotees in America, and so please tune in at that time, 12 o'clock noon UK time, for a Srimad Bhagavatam with the Harrisburg devotees. Uh, this time is not tomorrow, it's 12 o'clock noon. Okay, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your time. Thank you, Hare Krishna Thank Maharaj. You so much. Thank you. Thank you, Guru.